When I was just out of high school, I had all the papers, you won't believe this, I had all the papers ready. I was going to be going to Quantico, Virginia to study to become a member of the FBI. Right out of high school. And the special agent that was training us, needless to say, I didn't follow through. Of course, I, I, one of the reasons probably is I just didn't want to have to run into J. Edgar Hoover and drag. But anyway, you knew that about him, didn't you? He was a Mason, 33rd degree Mason also. I saw his special room in the big Masonic Lodge that they had there. And uh, yeah, he would go to work and dress up like a woman, just like Mayor Giuliani. Giuliani, I call him. There's something wrong there somewhere, isn't there? That's not normal behavior. But anyway, one thing they did teach us, they said, one of the things the FBI deals with is counterfeit money. Of course, I believe all printed U.S. money is counterfeit. None of it's legitimate. But, uh, they were, but they're trying to, because it's not real money. Real money is silver and gold. There is no other real money. Federal Reserve notes are not money. It doesn't say anywhere that they are money. It says it's legal tender. I don't know who made it legal. Legal tender is not money. When you tender something, it's satisfaction in lieu of something real. In other words, uh, if I were going to hire Stephen to repair something in the church, and he did it, and I said, okay, now I will, uh, I can't pay you in gold or silver, so I will give you a $20 Federal Reserve note. And he says, okay, I'll accept that. I didn't pay the debt. I gave him a bankruptcy note. He excused the debt by accepting that 20 because he can go to the store and buy something and it'll excuse his debt and accept that. And all paper money is is everybody excusing each other's debt. Nobody's really ever paying anything. That's the kind of a system we're running. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Everybody's excusing debt, handing paper around. That's all it is. What's the intrinsic value of that money, if, as so-called money? It's paper and ink. It costs the same exact amount to print a $100 bill as it does a one. You know, back in the 1970s, there was a man in Minneapolis that got hauled in for counterfeiting. And they had him on trial, and he had a pretty sharp attorney, but the defense was, he said, I didn't do anything wrong. He held up one of their $20 bills, and he said, I don't see any place here where this is copyrighted. And they don't have any copyright on it. He said, so I made copies. They said, but that's money. He said, no, it isn't money. He said, it doesn't say anywhere on here that it's money. It says it's a Federal Reserve note. It says legal tender, but it doesn't say money. And he said, it isn't even a note because the def legal definition of a note is it has to be, the note has to say that it will pay a certain sum at a certain time at a certain place. He said, your Federal Reserve note doesn't promise to pay anybody anything, anytime, anywhere. It's not a note. It's not money. It's not a note. There's no copyright. I made copies, lots of copies. Now that I make copies, you can never copyright it. Do you know that? If you have something and anybody else makes one copy, before you register that, you can't register it. If one more copy is produced. So anyway, the jury acquitted him. They said he's not guilty. And the government appealed it they, on the grounds. Here's what they said in their appeal. This just can't be. It's quite an appeal, isn't it? This just can't be. They lost the appeal. 
Now, I'm not saying you can go and do this, because you're asking for a lot of trouble. I'm just saying that this guy did it, and there, were, there was a thinking jury there that actually acquitted him to prove that point. This is not money. It's legal tender. And they made it legal, and what they make legal isn't necessarily legal. It's illegal according to the Constitution, but the government doesn't care about that. But anyway, I said all that to say this. When they were taught, teaching us about counterfeit money, they didn't show us all the different kinds of counterfeit money. They had us memorize the real one, the one they made. We had to memorize everything on it and have it down to perfection. Because then anything that wasn't right, you could spot in a minute. And that's how it is with the Word of God. Know what it says, and you'll know what it doesn't say. I've had people quote a verse, cleanliness is next to godliness. They said, show me where it is. And they start looking. They get the concordance out, and it's not there. It isn't there. The Bible doesn't say that. And I don't think that washing up with the Zaster Irish Spring is going to make you godly. So know what it says, and you'll know what it doesn't say. All right? Now we need to uh, shun profane and vain babblings. And you know, people are going to come in and tell you all kinds of things. And by the way, uh, and I'm going to be announcing this many, many times, very frequently, that when visitors come in or people come in here, if somebody comes around and asks you for an email address or your address, don't give it to them. Let me tell you, check with me first. Because you'll get on their mailing list and they don't necessarily belong here. And they compile a list and they'll throw everything at you that hell has to offer. We've had that happen too. Isn't that something how we have to, have to, we have to be on our guard all the time? All right? But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. You get into the realm of science fiction with some of these things. But people love the sensational, don't they? Sends a chill up and down their spine. Lizard people. Little men from Mars. I've had people teach that as doctrine. Some people send me email and I got that. You know, one of the best buttons on the computer is delete. It, it, it's wonderful the way it works. You see something came in from somebody, you just hit delete, it's, and it's gone. Just like that, it's gone. Isn't it wonderful? <clears throat> yeah. And, you know, I've got a fireplace at home, too. It works very, very nicely for mail. Certain types. And their word will eat as doth a canker. Words that eat like a cancer. A canker is a cancer. Well, well. In other words, it'll spread. What people say can spread like a cancer? Oh, you wouldn't believe what I heard. Oh, you wouldn't believe what I saw. Oh, you wouldn't, you know. And, and they'll get something going. Sometimes you wonder, how do things get started? Well, cancerous words. Now he mentions a case in point here. Of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus? Who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. Notice they're overthrowing the faith of some people because they put together a series of verses or some kind of a system that sounds remotely plausible and people who don't know the word get mixed up and ensnared in it 